welcome to my studio. I'm Michael Stamola, a photographer in West Tisbury, showing at the Field Gallery. And as we take a look around my studio, you can see some of the work that I've done in the past, and there are some proofs clipped and pinched and hung on bookcases here, proofs that uh, didn't quite meet my standard. And then as we continue to go around, you'll see two of the vellum prints that'll be in this year's show. You can see more of that at the Field Gallery's uh, website. This is some other work, another proof of an image in the show this year called What Remains. As you can see, there's lots of interesting things here I use as inspiration, including all my photography books and odds and ends that I've collected, old cameras and the like. When I finish shooting outside, I come back here and create photographs using some handmade materials that I've created over the years, some scanned materials, and you want to get combined in Photoshop to produce the photographs that you see here and that are in this year's show. What's your background? And uh, why did you start making art? Well, my professional career was in uh, counseling and college administration. I did that for 40 years at the City University of New York, one of its small community college, where I also was the director of a program for students with disabilities. My interest in photography has been probably since I was in undergraduate school, but had lots of trouble in the dark room, so that didn't really work out early. But by the early 2000s, when digital photography became more accessible, um, I took coursework at SVA, School of Visual Arts, and the International Center of Photography uh, in New York City. And early on, also, uh, part of my job included working with students with vision impairments. And we would spend a lot of time about uh, talking about how they saw the world, because part of our job was to help faculty develop materials and construct learning experiences that would allow them to access content, visual content included. So my early photography was very distorted, very selective focus, and we used to share experiences about how those photographs seemed to represent some of the ways that they saw the world. What's the biggest personal reward you get from being an artist? Well, I guess there are two things. One, I get to express myself. You know, I have something that I produce myself, and there's tremendous satisfaction in that and reward. But I think perhaps even more importantly is the reactions you get, I get to the work that I make. And it kind of sets up a conversation with viewers about uh, my take on the visual world and their take, and the conversation can lead to really wonderful places. So what, if anything, does your work aim to say? I think people are generally used to seeing photography as totally, completely representational. And I see the camera as a tool that you can use creatively uh, and to create more subjective uh, images. And I try to do that using software and these materials that I will scan, multiple exposures and the like, that all kind of represent maybe an emotional take, a uh, particular place I'm at in my head at the time when I'm out photographing. And this may be a good time to say that this COVID period has been a very interesting one for me. I'm, I sense a tremendous amount of tension in myself due to the uncertainty, uh, no clear path forward. And so I, I've been exploring with some of the photographs uh, in the show this year this state of flux uh, emotionally, psychologically, that I think most people are in. So I've been using my camera and my tools, if you will, to uh, create some photographs that at least represent, for me, this state of mind I'm in. And there are... So what's the coolest thing that you've learned lately? Well, photographically, I learned how to make tintypes using a wet plate collodion process that was uh, invented in 1851 by Frederick Scott Archer. It's amazing. It was the only way to make photographs for about 30 years and was replaced in the, in the 1880s by uh, dry plate. So I took a workshop just as COVID was starting. We missed a lot of opportunity to work in the wet plate darkroom at uh, the Penumbra Center in New York City. But I now have chemistry and things like that, so I'm ready to undertake. And that's the coolest thing I've done in a very long time. So how has your recent change in medium from leafed to vellum influence the way you look at your subjects? 
Well, that's interesting. I, I see this as on a continuum. Um, I started doing these uh, soft focused or selective focus images using textures my own and multiple exposures and things like that. It was always intriguing to me that I, I had to find other ways to accomplish what I visually thought these images could look like. There are a couple of pieces here. This is an image taken at Tashmu on the west side, taken a while ago, actually, probably 2010 or 8, always in soft focus, and applied some textures. And what the leafing process allowed me to do was to add something, in this case, gold leaf to the reverse and then varnish, which I think enhanced the original work. And a lot of fun to do. The other one here, a larger one, was taken at uh, Tashmu Farm uh, on a foggy morning. And again, some of my textures are part of the multiple exposures there. And what I find is that the, the leafing just helps accentuate what I want to say. So if you could only have one food to eat forever, what would it be? Hmm, that's really easy because it's one of these things on my desk <laughs> after lunch every day. Really? Dark chocolate with cherries and almonds. Oh boy. Fabulous. I could eat this every day. <laughs> and I do eat this every day. <laughs> but for sustenance, I, I would say a traditional bolognese ragu with pasta, homemade pasta. I could do that every day too. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm.